Hi, my lovely creatives. My name is Irene and today I'm going to talk to you about art challenges. I believe that art challenges are a fantastic way of pushing yourself creatively and I would encourage every artist, doesn't matter what level you are at, to participate in some art challenges once in a while. They are lots of fun, they really help you try out new materials and help your creative thinking evolve and there are so many happening at the moment that it's really easy to pick some and to join in. So I'm going to talk to you through all the art challenges happening at the moment. It's October, which means that this is the month of art challenges. And at the same time, I'm going to make a drawing in this little sketchbook. So let's turn my camera around and let's get started. I am going to make the first Inktober drawing of this year. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to keep up with Inktober for the entire month because I have a lot of things on my plate and it's just not really going to be possible to prioritize this. But it's Saturday, it's the 1st of October, and I love Inktober, so I decided to join in. And I'm going to do both Inktober as well as Peachtober today. And the first word is cave for Peachtober, and for Inktober it is gargoyle. So I'm just going to make a little thumbnail of what these two prompts could look like. So I'm thinking... This could be a building, so, with a gargoyle on the top. And because I have not so much time, I don't want to spend too much time thinking about this. I like this idea. I also really like the idea of making a cave entrance. So maybe this could be some stalagmites, stalactites with here. And the gargoyle could be like a guardian. Gargoyles sort of tend to sit on top of buildings and they often look like little devils. You can see the paper I'm going to use is very small and I have some really fine fine liners because I just need to keep it all a little bit simple. I don't have lots of time and um, ideally I would fill this sketchbook with my Inktober drawings. I'm not going to do them all, but with the ones that I can manage. I can't like this. Let's have a little bit more of a brainstorm. So, this could be a cave entrance, so to say. I like this and then there could be some things in the background. I think I'm going for this third option because it's quite a dynamic little sketch. There's a little bit more going on. I know it's hard to see. I'll make this a bit darker. So this could be the cave entrance. Uh, could be a gargoyle sitting here. Uh, and then some stuff in the background. It's a little bit more dynamic than these two, they're a bit more static and I don't want to spend too much time thumbnailing and thinking and thinking about the perfect composition. I just want to go straight in there, have some fun and spend some time creating art. And I think that's what this art challenge is all about. It's all about uh, challenging yourself creati creatively, trying new things, uh, making art every day, making art every day a habit, so that making art on a daily basis becomes more normal. And to be honest, for me, a lot of this um, is just about pushing myself creatively. If I join a challenge and I commit to it fully, it's all about pushing myself creatively. So 
So I have these uh, Micron fine liners. They're very fine, very thin. Um, I have used them before. I just like to put them back in the box. So they are tidy. Um, and these are the ones that I'm going to use. So this is a sketchbook I've had for ages. Um, I started it in May 2020. So let's carry that on. I am getting started with my sketch and at the same time I'm going to talk about why I think people should participate in our challenges. And of course you can set yourself all sorts of challenges and goals to learn and especially when you're self-taught I'm sure there's lots of topics that you find interesting to research and that you want to learn of. But sometimes it can be quite hard to think of what to draw next or it can be hard to um, decide what material to use next or what topic you would like to research and by joining an art challenge you instantly throw yourself in a deep end and you have a reason to practice a specific skill. So every art challenge focuses on a different skill and I've joined uh, quite a few over the last few years and every time I really felt like my um, creative learning really made a big jump. I either uh, learned lots about researching different topics or I became much better at sketching faces or I became much better at sketching hands or I learned how to use ink or watercolors and every challenge has really um, made me grow as an artist much faster than if I had just practiced this by myself. It's because an art challenge usually really makes you practice something in a really intense way. So for example, you have the 100 hat challenge, where you are drawing 100 hats. The uh, challenge is created by Ahmed Aldori, and it consists of a Pinterest board with lots of reference photos and everyone is drawing the same hat. And it's just a fantastic way of elevating your portrait studies. There's so many different phases in that challenge and by drawing 100 hats at the beginning this might be really difficult but at the end you will find that it becomes so much easier and much more natural and it is really a lot of fun to do and it's lovely to see your progress. So you could do a hat a day, some people try and complete it in a month some people try and complete it much faster than that. Um, but you can take as long as you need for that challenge. So that's one that I joined into a few years ago and I'm really loving it. The main art challenge for October is Inktober. Well, the most famous one anyway. And I know Inktober is a little bit controversial at the moment because the Inktober brand has been trademarked and people have been struggling selling their artworks uh, because of it. But I'm still really enjoying it. I love the fact that there are so many people joining in and every time when you um, post your pictures online or when you have made a picture, you don't need to share it. And you look later at what everyone else created. I feel so inspired to see what everyone has made and everyone's different interpretations of the word of the day. There are loads of spin-offs of the Inktober ideas with lots of um, new words and other artists creating words along different themes and different, um, different mediums. And you can find one that really suits you. You don't need to follow the official prompt list. You can uh, pick one of your own prompt lists that you really like. So maybe you like a magical theme or a nature theme or one about books or one about films or characters. Maybe you want to do an art challenge in October for um, watercolors or a digital challenge. And I can tell you there is hundreds out there, maybe thousands even. So if you um, want to feel inspired and you would like to do a challenge where you draw 30 um, illustrations or you make 30 paintings throughout the month of October, have a little look online, Google Inktober and lots of different prompt lists will come up. And uh, I guarantee you, you can find one that suits you. I think there is a great benefit of joining a challenge that lasts an entire month. It is a lot of fun to uh, feel like you're part of a community and to actually join it in the month that it's happening. Because every time when you uh, share something, there's lots of other people who also share their artwork and it really is very motivating and it helps you stay on track. 
I also think there's this huge benefit of creating something every day for a month. And you build a bit of a habit. I think the, at the end of October, people are usually a little bit tired of it. And it's time to start doing something else. But by that time, you're so used to making art part of your daily routine. And there is a really great value to that. I think you sort of stop thinking too much about what you're creating and your inspiration becomes much easier towards the end of the month. Whilst in the beginning sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming or you need some time to think about each prompt. After a while you will find that your ideas will start flowing much easier. And naturally there's always days that it comes easier and days that it's a bit harder. But I think as a general rule when you create with a specific medium every month, um, every day of the month, you will find that it becomes like, almost like a natural thing to do. I am in the middle of starting to ink in my little illustration here. And this is the first time in months that I am taking out my ink pens and making an illustration in ink. And I'm really enjoying it. It feels really good to uh, create in pen. And I love pen drawings and drawing in ink. You can see that I am using these uh, mic micron markers. These uh, are new for me. I used to have a different set of markers, but I wanted to try these. They are waterproof, so I can paint over them later on if I wanted to. And um, I bought them specifically because they have really fine tips. I like to work with markers where I can create thick lines and thin lines, and I have different sizes of nibs for um, finer lines or thicker lines. I also really like that they're waterproof. I needed some new waterproof markers. Mine had run out of ink. I've used them up. Inktober is specifically made for drawing in ink. So ballpoint pens, ink pens or uh, ink paint that you apply with a brush. But you don't need to join in ink. I think when you join any challenge, I think it really is good to um, set rules that work for you. No one is controlled these rules. There's, there's no commission that tells you off if you use the wrong medium or if you uh, change the rules a little bit, if you decide to create every other day or if you decide to um, use paint instead of ink. You can really apply the rules in a way that works for you. And the same counts for sharing your artwork. Of course, there is a community feel to sharing your artwork every day and seeing what other people are sharing. But there's also absolutely no obligation to do so. If you want to keep your work private, you can do so. This is your creative journey and your artwork and I think people should be proud of what they're creating at whatever level they are at. Um, there is no obligation to share your work, even though it might feel like that sometimes. The There's also lots of challenges for other mediums and I do think it is helpful to pick a challenge that you want to do for a month and uh, pick the medium that you're going to use for that challenge. So every day when you are creating the um, drawing or the painting that you have to make for that prompt or for that specific challenge, that you know beforehand what the medium is that you're going to use. You don't have to think too much about it because the longer you spend um, thinking about, oh, what do I have to do? the easier it becomes to step away from the challenge and actually not create. And you want to make the process as easy as possible for yourself because creating for a month, every day for a month, is hard. I think it's really easy to underestimate it, but it's difficult to commit time to do a specific thing every single day for a month. Because you will find that work runs late, that your family needs you somehow, that... There is a social event that you have to go to. Or perhaps you feel a bit tired one day. Maybe um, there was something else going on that uh, took your attention. And it's, it's really easy to miss a day and then feel a bit guilty and then stop creating. I always recommend that if you miss a day, just skip that day and then join again the day after with the prompt that is set for that day. It's absolutely fine to miss a day. Don't punish yourself for it or stop creating because of it. But it's hard to follow a challenge every single day for a month. So the easier you can make it for yourself, the easier the challenge becomes and the more likely it is that you're going to complete it. And I think picking a medium that you're going to use for the month and having everything ready in a place where you can easily get it 
really makes a huge difference. So even if it's only one pen, a little sketchbook, a pencil and an eraser, and that's the only thing you're going to use, if you put it somewhere where you can get to it easily, where it's ready for you to use every day, that makes a huge amount of difference. I can't stress this enough. I really think it makes all the difference in the world. There are a few other art challenges happening in October, which I really enjoy, which I'll definitely um, be part of, sort of in some way or another. And I want to mention them, but I'm not going to mention every single challenge happening in October, because there is literally hundreds of them. One that I love and that I'm using today as well is Peachtober. And Peachtober is created by Furry Little Peach. Um, and the illustrator who is behind that name is Sean Dantes from Australia. And I just really love the colorful and fun vibe of their illustrations and the uh, positivity behind it. And I just yep, feel like this is one that is really fun to join into. If ink is not really your medium of choice and you love to join a community of people who love colorful and fun illustrations, um, yeah, maybe this is a challenge that suits you a little bit better than Inktober. Another challenge that's happening this month, which I am really tempted to join into, is Jesstober. And this is created by Jess Carp, and you can find her both on Instagram as well as on YouTube. And she makes the most amazing art full of positivity and joy and gratitude. And if you are looking for a challenge that really makes you feel good and positive, then yeah, check this one out because I think it is really lovely. This year she has decided to follow the alphabet. So each day uh, follows a letter of the alphabet. So at the end you will have 26 illustrations that um, go from A to Z and that be full of positivity. And uh, yeah, you can use a medium of your choice so as well as the last one. If ink is not really your medium of choice, perhaps Jestober is one that you would like to check out. And at the end, you maybe you can make a poster or um, greeting cards or something with the alphabet on it. So you'll have a really nice collection of letters that you can use for all sorts of things. Another art challenge that I think would be a lot of fun, but very specific to join into, is Shroomtober. That is created by Shrill Art, and you can find it under the hashtag Shroomtober. Um, 2020 and in uh, Shroomtober you draw a different type of mushroom every day and I'm pretty sure the materials are up to you you don't have to use ink but if you like to really dive into the natural world and learn a lot about a very specific um, plant like the, the mushroom then uh, yeah this might be the one for you I thought it was a lot of fun and there's so many beautiful mushrooms out there I love creating art with mushrooms in them so there's like literally so many art challenges and for everyone out there is something. And um, yeah, there, if you want to draw this month, whether you do only one day of a challenge or every single day of the month, yeah, there's something out there for you. So um, have a look. You can see that my illustration is slowly coming together. I have started to add more and more layers of ink and because my pens are really fine i'm using a hatching technique to create some darker areas and the entire illustration well, i did two today it took me just over an hour the you have to have an hour dedicated to making art that is just for me is a bit of a luxury i think this might be surprising because i create every single day but a lot of the time i make art for uh, courses for commissions and to just do something that is really fun for me is uh, yeah it is really enjoyable I absolutely love it so I'm not planning to use this for anything this is just time for me and time to practice something and just to stretch myself creatively it takes away a lot of the pressure of the artwork if what you're creating is just for fun Let me speed this video up a little bit, just to, to make it a little bit more interesting for you. So I decided to use lots of hatching and I'm creating this gargoyle, which actually ended up looking a little bit more like, like a little monster of some kind, not quite stone. And I know this is not my best illustration ever, but I really enjoyed making it. And I really feel like I'm slowly getting back into the habit of 
drawing with ink. I think when you join a challenge such as this, working fairly small can be a great benefit because it's very easy to um, get a bit overwhelmed by really big paintings. There are some amazing artists out there that create these enormous paintings every day of Inktober and uh, I just don't know how they find the time. <laughs> like, I genuinely don't know. So, um, perhaps they do lots of preparations already in the months before, as soon as the prompt list is being released. But for me, working small is what I can manage today. So that is what I'm doing. It's also a really nice way of filling my sketchbook, because this sketchbook has been um, yeah, lying around for ages, and I love the idea of filling it up with art in a specific theme. You all know that I love working traditional, and just putting pen and ink to paper is so satisfying, and I really love using it. Sometimes it's really nice to work in black and white as well, and not to have to worry about colors and do colors go together. Um, how is it going to blend? Do I have to mix the colors? Really simplifying things and going back to basics is something that I really enjoy about using ink. So I uh, enjoy using Inktober the way it was sort of originally intended with traditional mediums and ink. But you have absolutely no obligation to do it that way. It's absolutely fine to use um, yep, different mediums or work digital if that's what you prefer and if that's your medium of choice or something that you're more familiar with. I decided to frame these illustrations um, by leaving the edge of the paper white. I sort of thought if I'm going to fill the rest of the sketchbook with Inktober illustrations, it would be a really great way of sort of unifying their look and making them a little bit more similar. Last year I joined every single Inktober day and I completed all the prompts which uh, I was very proud of and it was a lot of work and at the end of the month I was a little bit tired from, from drawing so I was quite happy when the month was over even though I really really enjoyed it. Um, and this year I'm really busy with creating courses and I have lots of things that I want to achieve between now and the end of the year. So um, to commit to doing a drawing every single day of the month um, yeah, it's a little bit too much for me. I just know this beforehand already, so I've decided not to do that. But I would still really feel like I was losing out if I didn't make a few illustrations for Inktober. Um, so although it's not my main focus for the month, I'm glad that at least I managed to do one, well two, because I know I have already completed the second one as well. And by combining two prompts, like what I'm doing today, I restrict myself even more than when I just use one prompt list. But in a way it's quite nice, because if you have to think of two words and how you would combine them, I think it's easier to come up with ideas sometimes. Sometimes the... Um, yeah, for example, for the next illustration I'm making, the words are dandelion and scurry. And I could just draw one flower or uh, scurry for me, it means like to scurry, like to run away. Um, so if I would only use one of those words, I could make a drawing. But by combining the two of them, you instantly tell a bit of a story. And I really like that. And storytelling is something that I love to do in my artwork. And I think with this one as well, cave and um, gargoyle. By combining the two, there's instantly a little bit of a story in the illustration. And that's something that I found a lot of fun. I also don't want to look at anyone else's work before I start my artwork. Um, I don't know if this is something that you do if you join an art challenge, if you look at what other people have created before you make your own. And I think it's quite good practice not to, because you can get really distracted by people's beautiful art and maybe feel a bit discouraged um, before you start your own. So I always try to create my own artwork and then when everything is finished then have a look online and see what other people's interpretation was. And I often see things where I thought oh this was so cool I wish that I have thought of that or this would be amazing. Um, and I don't want my work to be influenced by anyone else's so I try to not look at what people create until I am done with mine. So 
um, I'm really using my hatching technique to create some more darks in the picture. I'm curious if you are joining any art challenges this month. And of course there is lots of art challenges at other times of the year as well. So for example you have Mermaid, which is drawing mermaids every day for the month of May. So if you're really into fantasy, you love mermaids, perhaps this is one that you want to check out. Um, and there's um, yeah, there's literally there's so many art challenges that you can join into. I really love um, Fun with Faces, which is a challenge by Carly Clemens. Charlie Clemens, I don't know if I pronounce it correct. And um, yeah, she is fantastic in drawing people, and her challenge is all about um, drawing people's faces. So if that's something that you want to practice, perhaps that is a challenge that you would like to look into. So I often think of what is it that I want to um, achieve? Like what? why do I join the challenge? Do I want to get to know a new medium? Do I want to um, learn more about fantastical creatures or the realistic drawing? And I join the challenge with a specific idea in mind. Um, is it just because I want to make art and habit and I don't really mind what I'm drawing? Is it that I want to create art that I then can add to my portfolio. There's lots of different reasons why you could join a challenge. I think a really uh, popular challenge is the draw this in your style challenge. Um, if you've not heard of that, it just means that if you, uh, if you look for draw this in your style, you find lots of artworks by different artists where they encourage people to recreate their artwork in their own style. And I think it um, is a really great way of doing it. But for me, I prefer joining challenges where I let my own imagination speak a little bit more. I have done some Draw This In Your Channel challenges in the past and I always feel a bit more like I'm copying someone else's artwork. I really messed up this hand, by the way. So I uh, decided to just cover it. <laughs> you can see it just really didn't work. I was a little bit too quick in putting my lines down. So the two words I'm following in this second illustration are scurry and then the lion. And I made a little sketch to start which I didn't film. And I really liked the idea of this kid running with this really large dandelion that um, was sort of floating behind him a little bit. I enjoyed making the second one as well. I spent less time on it. The yeah, so for me, I love drawing art challenges where I feel like I can um, grow creatively, where I can use my own imagination and create something that is truly my own instead of copying someone else's work. But there's nothing wrong with drawers in your style. There's um, it's a really fun way of practicing something and maybe also learning from other artists, be inspired by them and learn from them. So this dandelion is like a puffball. <laughs> and I wanted there to be movement in the picture as well. If I look at my illustrations from a few years ago, a lot of the figures are very stiff. And nowadays I like there to be more movement. I literally just covered it up. I thought he can be holding a ball. <laughs> I was very unhappy with that hand. That's the thing with ink. It's very hard to remove once it's on the paper. I can cover it up with something else, of course, but you cannot really erase it, which is um, also quite freeing. If you're not used to drawing in ink, perhaps you will find that um, it can be a little bit scary, but I think it also offers a lot of freedom by just going in there and accept that every line is going to be part of the drawing. I'm really curious to hear if you have ever joined any art challenges and if you are likely to join any. Uh, maybe Inktober or a different one, one of the ones that I've mentioned here so far. And how you found it. And perhaps you're going to do some art challenges going forward. 
I think the being part of the community is like feeling like you're part of an art community is one of the best things about it. A little bit of shading. The second illustration is much more minimalist compared to the first one. And as I said, I want to frame the picture as well, make an outline around the outside. Makes it feel like they're a little bit in the same, part of the same group maybe, even though it's a very different style drawing. So, there we go. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe. There will be um, more parts to this, to this video. I will be creating more art based on art challenges at some point. Maybe I will do some more Inktober drawings. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure you subscribe, click on that little bell to get all the updates. Let me know if you have joined in our challenge this month. And yeah, I'll see you really shortly. Bye bye.